Okay, welcome everybody. We're going to go ahead and kick off the patch one stream here for Alpha. And as you uh, have probably noticed, if we've been doing this for a while here, every time a new stream or every time a new patch comes out, we do a brief stream to cover, you know, whatever's new since the previous patch, get everybody up to date on it. And, you know, put some, some stuff out there that people can take a look at if they want to look at this game and have no idea what's going on with it. And are just like, you know, hey, is it dead? Is it alive? What's going on? All that kind of stuff. We do have a blog. And that blog is kept up to date on itch, but it's fairly slow. And we have a much more up to date one on our forum, which people are always welcome to check out. And I will drop the links to the forum one here real quick just at the beginning of the stream, and I'll probably drop them again during the stream, but there's the forum for uh, for regular updates. Let me go ahead and uh, put that into the chat there. And then, of course, there's also the uh, the alpha one where you can drop by and, and see updates as well. And here is the blog specifically for this release. Let me go ahead and put that in here. So that you can uh, you can take a look at the patch notes, see what's been going on with it. But let me go ahead and jump in, and we'll talk about what's new in this game, what we've added, what we've removed, you know, what features have changed, all that kind of good stuff. So here's the basics. In the latest patch, which is the Alpha One, uh, though currently we're on the the second small bug fix for Alpha One. On Alpha One, the big things that we did was we got the mission system started. So the missions are capable of being done now. There actually is a mission system in place. We have the first voiced interactions with players. So you can now walk up to Bad Luck Bart in Bad Luck Bart's bar and hear the voice of the awesome Hour Day Gamer. You can actually complete the first two quests. We call them missions in the game. And, of course, the rest of the stuff, like the job board and everything, is, is there as well. We also have, in the second little bug fix here, the one that you see that, that I'm on, that will be on itch in a few hours, we have the beginning of localization. And I've actually uh, launched this particular session of the game in a localization mode so that I can show you guys the first text that we've located. Uh, with a big thanks to um, Serge Letarent, who is a, uh, a fantastic French uh, Linux enthusiast who maintains the uh, Botan de Jeu Linux and has, has graciously translated the control scheme for the game into French for us, marking the very first uh, piece of content in this game to actually be localized. The goal, of course, is to localize the entire game, but you know, we're, it's just me doing the coding, so it takes a long time for that kind of thing to happen. So, let me go ahead and jump on in, and we will, uh, we will get going with what's new and what's happening. Okay, so first up, you got the ship shop. This is still very rudimentary, it's still very work in progress. You know, nothing really changed here from the previous one. Um, I think just for fun, we'll go ahead and we'll do the Spectre. It doesn't have any cons, but for demonstration purposes, if you were to grab the El Toro, it's got the two different cons that you can switch between. At the moment, there's really no difference, but in actual gameplay, there will be. So that will become a function that will be useful more in the future. And then, of course, in, uh, the Spectre has just the one set of engines that it can use, but the... El Toro has more engines that it can use. You can actually use a single, you can use a double, you can use little tiny winglet engines that go on the sides like that. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump onto the Spectre. And that's the one that we're going to use for now. So let's go ahead and give this a paint job. I've got everything from like some extremely uh, exotic paints to some, some much more subdued paints going on here. And, you know, you can... You can take your pick as to what you like. Eventually, this will be something that can be heavily customized. And you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with it. But right now, it's it's still very rudimentary. It's more just to show that the functionality exists and is part of the game. 
So let's go ahead and uh, and get on with that part right now. Okay. As you can see here, we have the first localized content in the game. And that is the control screen right there on the side has been localized by Serge the Tyrant into French. And I can launch the game in, you know, whatever locale to test the different ones if you'd like to see. I probably will do it a little bit later in the stream. Uh, what it does by default is it picks up your actual... It picks up your... Excuse me. It picks up your actual um, Windows or Linux system locale and then runs based off that so that you can get, you know, a, a as seamless a language experience as possible. You know, at the moment, it's it's very, very rudimentary. This is the only screen, just that control screen is the only part that's actually been localized. But we'll get more localized as, as time goes on. Eventually, the entire game will be localized. So we'll get there. Now, you'll notice that sitting there in the corner is, of course, Bad Luck Bart has a mission for you down there on the station. So that helps guide you to the uh, the first location that you'll be heading to. And we will we will get to that in just a second here. Other things that are worth mentioning in this version. The task menu has now been collapsed. Uh, with your gamepad, you can actually open and close this very easily. Otherwise, you can just simply click on it. And it will give you details of the mission that you're currently on. There's going to be a list of completed missions here on the side. Uh, right now, those aren't clickable, but they will be eventually. Just not at the moment. And your current mission with the current things that you're working on. And then current info on your, on your current job that you're working on. So let's go ahead and head on down there and we'll go meet Bad Luck Bart. Now, one of the things that's on the backer poll for this month is whether or not we're going to replace the extremely rudimentary flight controls that I, that I built in a hurry when I ported across from Unreal over to something that's much smoother and, and better. Right now, they're very, very rudimentary and we definitely need to improve them. So, you know, we're still at a, at a very early state on this thing, so. Let's go ahead and fly on up there. And now you can fly through the station, you know, and just have some fun with this if you want to. I apologize for the slightly rough uh, keyboard controls. Generally, I demonstrate on gamepad to make it a little bit easier for people, but since my most recent patch on uh, on Debian, my Xbox controller isn't recognized, and I need to fix that. So you can fly right through the uh, the rings of the station if you want to, and see the underside. We're going to go ahead and we're going to fly up here. This is a good chance to demonstrate the interior cockpit view. Now, interior cockpits have been available for quite some time. And I'm still working on getting the uh, the draw distance right for those so that you don't have any uh, any flickering, but still have a good view of the interior. So we're going to head on over here, and we're going to come down and land our ship in the landing zone here. And I have the auto docking turned on, as that was actually a request from some patrons, was to, to make sure that there were some auto docking facilities available. You now notice down here at the bottom left, there's a little pop-up. It can be used for short messages, like right there, for example. It said, you know, welcome to uh, the Alpha Station. You can go over here as before, and you can actually access the job board. And then here you'll see various jobs that are available. You know, the jobs have the name of the job, the destination that they're going to. Uh, there's there's still some text in here as far as from and to that has not been implemented in the game yet, but it will be. You'll be able to have jobs that require you to go pick up something and then go drop it off. Now, um, there have been some comments from some people who checked it out recently that the ship meets requirements doesn't actually display anything except for that. That is correct. It is not currently checking if your ship meets requirements yet. So that is just a placeholder at the moment. So let's go ahead and head over here. And you can see here's where the quartermaster office is going to be. This is eventually where you'll be able to buy and sell things. And then here is the academy. And this is pretty exciting because 
the Flight Academy is coming soon. It's coming very, very soon. In fact, I just was working with uh, Kyle Hester, who's going to be the voice of the the uh, the flight instructor, to get started on some of the uh, the pieces for the Flight Academy. And the Flight Academy will serve as the first tutorials in the game, probably a, a few months out, realistically. But I'm I'm very excited because this piece is coming. And then this door, as you can see, is open, and we have a mission over there. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, uh, I was asked about why it simply starts talking to you when you walk up to it, as opposed to having like a, a interaction button, like say this one does. And that's actually just for the alpha. It will be switching to a interaction method more like this one has in the very immediate future. What will happen is you'll walk over to the uh, the person that you would like to talk to, and then you'll be able to highlight them and talk to them. But for the moment, you just walk up to them. So let's go ahead and talk to Bad Luck Bart here. Hey, it's very good to see you. And you see we've just completed a mission, meet Bad Luck Bart. And then Bad Luck Bart has a few things to talk to you about. So you can see a menu, you can just simply take off. I'm closed for business right now. And he'll let you know some details of this first mission that are going on. Well, and let me tell you. You can choose if you wish to uh, to continue with the mission or not. You know, it's it's entirely up to you. So any mission that you take that's an actual mission will have this little icon after it. That helps you distinguish it from jobs, which have a different icon. Uh, it probably won't stay I. It'll probably become something else. But for the moment, these little ones are the icon that indicates that what's going to happen is a mission versus a job. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this job. Get back. Thanks for stopping by. And he's got some basic uh, discussions that he can do. There isn't a whole lot. This is still. Welcome back. See you when you get back. Thanks this is still. By. This is still obviously something that we are just starting the beginning of. This guy doesn't have anything to say to you yet. And people have mentioned that some of the clipping is turned off on the. Welcome back. Oops. See you. Thanks for stopping by. That some of the clipping is turned off on the furniture and whatnot. And yes, yes, it is. That is just the way it is at the moment. Okay. So let's go ahead and head on out to the hangar bay here, and we will launch our ship. And now we've got some suspicious debris out here. Uh, this is the first sighting of this. The first time that we've had the ability to actually have waypoints and things like this in the game. These will eventually require you to use scanning. So you'll come out here and you'll come to a zone or whatever, and you'll use your scanner or your your tactical officer on your bridge crew will do the scanning however you want to do it. And so those things will come up when you scan for them. At the moment, they just are simply showing up, so it's easy to just deal with. If we go look at our mission, you'll see that we currently have this one tracked. We can say, hey, I don't want to track that. I'm not interested in what's going on with this mission right now. And you'll see that they go away. They no longer show up. So when you have a giant pile of missions, say, you know, 40 or 50 missions taking place all over the, the galaxy, you won't be burdened by having every single one of them show up. You'll just have a handful of tracked missions that show up. Now, you notice that's not there anymore. Well, you can either use the menu key to bring up the job board, the control key to bring up the job board, or the alt key which will bring up the mission board. Uh, I will be working on integrating that a little bit more so that it'll bring up the tablet interface and then you'll be able to switch between what item you want on the tablet, whether you want jobs or whether you want missions. But for the moment, we're just using the Alt key to bring up, mi bring up missions and the menu or control key to bring up jobs. Uh, there are joystick equivalents of those as well. So we can say, hey, we want this and I, I do want to track this. And then you'll see that the tracking shows up again. And you can now track these things. You'll notice also that the range uh, may have changed. Previously, um, the distances on some of these things was pretty uh, incorrect. I had I had made some mistakes. Let's go ahead and grab a job and, and we'll be able to see exactly uh, what's going on. Like So let's take this job right here that's going over to Station Alpha 1, for example. Because that'll be a nice quick one. 
So you'll see that I have a delivery, and now Station Alpha 1 has that little delivery with the little red, the little red glowy thing around it to show you where it is. And it's three kilometers away, which is a much more reasonable approximate distance as opposed to what it previously said in, uh, in the zero, which was 3,000 kilometers, and then it would suddenly jump to, you know, 99 meters because uh, I had just simply made an error. So that's been fixed. So let's go ahead now and we will head over to the suspicious debris and we're going to go ahead and pick one of those up. Now, to address some feedback uh, from, from testers on how the, the heat and engine power and such works, that is actually on the, the Patreon forum right now as to whether or not we're going to prioritize the extremely bare-bones flight model and bring it closer to what the, uh, the Unreal flight model was and start working on that, or if we're going to work on some of the other pieces first. And, you know, we're going to leave that up to the patrons, let the patrons decide what they think is most appropriate for that. Because, you know, when it comes right down to it, prioritization for this game is about the people who are, you know, the most, uh, the most involved. And you can't get more involved than spending a dollar or two a month to actually, you know, keep track of what's going on with it. So, a lot of those prioritization decisions, I... I I bring those to the Patreon and I say, hey guys, what would you like to see us work on next? And so far the flight model has not been a, a huge priority. So it says we collected a piece of cargo, we have four remaining. We can go get the rest of the cargo. That does need to eventually be added to the UI here, as in like uh, four pieces of cargo remaining or something. And that will happen. It's just not there yet. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably actually put it here under this where it'll have like four pieces of cargo remaining, something like that, so that we'll have like the ability to have steps under these, but that's not there quite yet. So let's go ahead and do that delivery since you can have missions and deliveries all kind of at the same time. Let's go ahead and hop over and do this delivery here. Now, deliveries, as you know, you really just have to only go in the space where the the delivery is, and just once you enter the zone, you effectively automatically deliver. We'll be going with a more robust delivery mechanism eventually, but at the moment, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to, you know, go to the zone, and then you will uh, you will have delivered. So there we go. Our delivery is completed. We got 1,050 credits for it, and we dropped off the weight. This time we'll keep it off. Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab some of the suspicious debris here. And we can, of course, also do this from the interior view. And you'll notice that these uh, tracking things actually do not clip through the scenery. So you can see them even if there's something between you and it. You'll always be able to track whatever you're tracking. That will apply to uh, combat tracking as well. Once we actually have the tactical and combat modules in place. And you're, you're trying to hunt down somebody. And you have their ship targeted. You'll see their ship move around. Even if they even if they are behind something or obscured by something, you'll still be able to keep track of where they are. So you can you'll be able to look around your your cockpit if you're in this view, or you'll be able to look around in this view and you'll see where they are. Because nothing's more obnoxious than having them you know clip below the dashboard or something and then you can't see them anymore. So we're gonna head over to this cargo here. So as far as um, like the the camera controls for for the free look, we're definitely going to be keeping the free look. Camera controls are going to still exist. Uh, what we may change, however, or probably will, is we'll change with the model a lot of the uh, the flight handling characteristics to give the ship a feeling of more mass, to make it handle differently when it's fully loaded than when it's empty, that sort of thing. 
These are things that we had in the Unreal model that we just didn't have a chance to port yet. Yeah, so we're going to head over to this one here. And I'm, I'm keeping a look to see if there's any uh, any comments, but I don't see any comments so far. So probably the biggest things coming in the next few patches that will be coming during the duration of Alpha 1 are going to be things like the ship customization actually working. Because right now, ship customization is just a very simple thing that just happens when you start up. You can customize your ship. And we obviously not want that to be the case. We want you to be able to, you know, seek out interesting new things to do to your ship, apply custom paint jobs, apply decals, things like that. So what will happen is there will be a, a ship customization through the quartermaster's office. But that obviously doesn't exist yet. But that, that will definitely be coming before we reach Alpha 2. And then we'll also be doing the flight model before we reach Alpha 2. Yeah, there's a, there's a number of things that, that are still to be done. The significance of Alpha 1 really is just that the, uh, the gameplay loops are now in place. So the, the core gameplay loops of being able to complete a mission, of being able to complete a job, now actually exist in-game. Being able to customize your ship being one of them, even if it is sort of in a simplified fashion. I am hoping before the end of Alpha 1 to actually get the uh, the localization you know, completely in place so that so that at least the text-based localization, if not voice-based localization, will be done before we go to Alpha 2. But we'll see how that goes. That'll depend on resources and time, and you know how that is. Right now, uh, the talented author Jessica Alter is working on getting all of the rest of the missions ported across from Unreal to to Godot. She's got a... F I, I don't know how many are already written. There's quite a few. Welcome, Saint Midium. I appreciate you being first. <laughs> if you have any questions at any point, just go ahead and um, bring them in. My my hope is before we reach Alpha Two that we have at least you know ten or fifteen quests so that you can actually get a bit of a feel for characters and whatnot. And then uh, one of the pieces of probably fairly big news that I should probably discuss before we go too far into uh, the stream here and, and it gets away from me time-wise is I should probably discuss what we've decided to do as far as pricing models for the game. We were originally going to make the game a $40 flat purchase for the, the complete game with, you know, all of its various content, and then bring out DLC with, like, additional star systems as the game went on at some point. But what we decided to do instead, partially because of a number of issues involving Steam, is we've decided that we're going to make, actually, the alpha system content, this, this whole first system, is actually going to be available for free. So what will happen is the, the base game will contain the alpha system, which is a number of planets, and all of the related content on them. And then, as new solar systems are unlocked and created and populated, we will simply sell those as DLC. People who have the physical edition or the deluxe editions will get those for will get those for uh, free with their with their existing membership. Yes, um, I, I had the Long Play Games project manager outside and somebody let him in just minutes after I started the stream and he is now, uh, he is now weighing in with his, with his little doggy uh, nonsense. <laughs> I'm 
I apologize for that, but uh, there was literally nothing I could do about it because it was it was uh, beyond where I could reach, and nothing I could nothing I could do at that moment. Yes. Yes, it does. It uses your channel name as opposed to your username if for some reason they don't match. And so for those that don't know, uh, St. Midium there is actually the uh, the fantastic QA person for our uh, our endeavor here. But also does some really amazing chiptunes on their channel there, the St. Midium channel. And you should definitely check them out. They are a very talented composer of chiptunes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop off the, uh, the salvage mission here. So let's go ahead and park that. Okay. And it looks like, whoops, it looks like I had a bug with the delivery there as well. But that is okay. We'll get that fixed. That's, that's what bug testing is for. So as soon as that delivery completed screen goes away here, you can go ahead and continue. Or is it just... That's a lovely bug. We'll need to fix that. Okay. Not entirely sure why it's uh, it's stuck there, but let me hop out here. And let's see if I can get it to uh, to clear. Uh, no, it is, it is quite intent on on that being a, uh, a delivery job. So let me just grab a different delivery job and clear it. I'll pick a different delivery job that's uh, far, far away. There we go. And I will clear that one. Now let's go ahead and turn in Bad Luck Bart's salvage. And I will uh, fix that delivery bug for the next patch. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure when that, that bug showed up. That, that just happened, so. But, you know, bugs are bugs. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn in Bad Luck Bart Welcome Salvage back. here. And we'll let him know that we, uh... You did a super job out there. We turned it in for him. Thanks. And he has paid us. And we Thanks are done. By. Okay, so now you see that we have those two missions are now in the completed. You can't click on either of them yet. At some point they will be clickable and you'll get a little, uh... A little brief description of what that mission entailed. It won't have much. It'll basically just be like this, but for each each individual one of them. And then additional missions will show up there. Now, right now, that is all of the mission content in the game. There is no more mission content. So if you come up Welcome here to talk back. to him again, he's just kind of loops on, on what he had. But that is what we've got for Alpha 1. It's It's a start. And while there's still plenty of bugs and plenty of things to fix, <laughs> like like this delivery bug that somehow just surfaced in the last like couple days. I don't know where that came from. But the important thing is we got it. We got it set. Okay, so let me go ahead and show some of the other languages that are possible here. Oh, and one of the small fixes that we did, I've done it without really uh, paying much attention to it, is that escape closes the tablet like it's supposed to. And then 
exits the game as opposed to uh, simply exiting the game even if you have the tablet up so that it's a bit more intuitive. Okay, so let me go ahead and relaunch here. But I will launch with a different localization and uh, we will we'll get a chance to take a look at the, uh, the localization here. So let me bring this back up again, but with a different uh, but with a different language set, so that you guys can see that piece too. And I'll just for uh, just for grins, we'll switch to a different ship. And how about one of my favorite really loud paint jobs, the, the nice bright orange one. Yeah, that delivery bug, I need to find out what happened with that. That's, that's going to be really annoying. So you'll notice this interior is different. It's, it is a different interior entirely from the previous one. Same kind of general theme, but different. And you'll notice most significantly that uh, the controls are now in... Norwegian bookmall as opposed to being in French. So I think that, for the most part, wraps up what I had to cover in uh, Alpha 1. So just to do a really quick recap for everybody as to what's what's new and improved and, and coming, I'll go ahead and I'll set up a delivery out here on Alpha 1. Or Alpha 1 Minor, how about that? Oh, I know what that's related to. I just realized what that bug is related to. That bug is related to a scale problem with the collision for the... Uh, for the the jobs. I I, I recognize that now. The, uh, the scale factor changed fairly substantially, and I had not fixed it yet for the planet or for the the moon. Okay, well, at least I know what that bug is I need to fix. So let's just fly on out here, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that. So let me, let me recap real quick while we're, while we're going on out here. And the, and the moon comes slowly around the planet there. So the new stuff, you can now do missions. We've got the voice acting started. We've got the academy coming. Voice acting for the academy is being worked on right now. Lines, dialogue, all that kind of good stuff. We have the set for the Academy already built. We've got localization starting. There is a there is a poll up on the Patreon for any backer, one dollar a month or higher, to vote on the direction that we'll head next, what will make our next big priority. Uh, ship controls. Uh, content, a few things like that. In fact, let me go ahead and switch over to it. Let me, uh, let me switch over to it here real quick. And we will... We will bring that up so folks can see. Here's the poll right here. Let's see, let me bring the... Uh, the browser window in live. There it is. Okay. So you can see this is the uh, the poll that's up. And these are the things that backers are getting to vote on right now, which is what they want us to make the priority in Alpha 1. Do they want the priority for the next patches to be ship handling mechanics, gamepad integration, missions, or the ship customization mechanics. That'll be things like uh, being able to customize the ship with the money that you make. Things like that. Being able to go into the quartermaster's office and start the, uh, the ship things. As opposed to it not saving any of it, which, you know, right now it's sort of a placeholder. Just when you start the game, it lets you pick it as a placeholder to figure out what you want to do. So that's the poll that's up right now. People can go vote on that whenever they're ready. Now let me go ahead and drop a, a link to that here into the stream.
And now this is just for backers at $1 a month or higher, but those folks are uh, the ones who are the most invested, so they get to pick. And that will determine the direction that we're going to go for the uh, the majority of this patch until we get that piece, you know, hammered out and, and working much better and to people's satisfaction. The other big things that are coming, the game is going to be released on Steam. You may have noticed that the name changed slightly. It's now Smugglers of Cygnus Alpha System. And that is uh, an indicator of what the free game is going to actually be called. And that game will be free on Steam. It will be free on Itch. It might even end up being you know, available on other platforms. I don't know yet. And it will continue to be free forever. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be switching to a model where the deluxe editions and the system DLCs will be for cost. So when you want like the uh, the next the next solar system with its bundle of quests and missions and characters and ships and things, you know that will be available for a small charge, and it will just be a DLC, and it will work anywhere. I think that pretty much uh, wraps it up. If anyone has any questions, I'll go ahead and address them, but I, I suspect there, uh, there aren't really any questions hanging on out there. So, unless anyone has any questions, uh, we'll call this a wrap, and I'll get to work fixing the, uh, the scale bug on the jobs. <laughs> Thank you all very much for, for your patience. Thank you very much for sticking around with us as we've been working on this game. You know, progress has been very, very slow, but there's just one person doing the vast majority of the uh, the coding and the ship creation and the station creation and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's it's not like a game dev makes money, so it's, it's only something that I can do at night and on weekends. So, I appreciate everyone's patience with, uh, you know, the, the slow pace that we're going, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much and have an awesome, awesome new year.